Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, it's uh, lovely to see you. Anybody visiting us for the first time? <laughs> Hallelujah. No one. Okay. If you have a look at Psalm 100, it's in page 527. We'll read that, and uh, we're talking on praise. Why do we praise, and uh, how do we praise? And when do we praise? How loud do we praise and how soft? <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you okay? So uh, let's read on. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Make a noise unto the Lord. <laughs> Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all you lands. That means everyone. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, He is God. It is He who made us and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Let's pray. Father, bless us. Give us utterance to the Holy Ghost. Open up Your Word to us. Enlighten our understanding. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. We honor You, Lord. Give you glory and give you praise. Hallelujah. Amen. You go to a rugby match and no one is silent. Everybody is praising their rugby hero and you, you, you go. <laughs> My wife says, uh, and they swear. <laughs> um, and uh, when you go to a, a rock concert, everybody is, uh, you know, but when you come to church, <laughs> It's a different thing altogether. But the Bible tells us to make a joyful noise. Not just a noise, but one that is joyful. Make a joyful noise, and you make it to the Lord. Part of our praise. The Bible tells us that everything that has breath, and as long as you breathe, you ought to praise the Lord. The fact that you are alive because you breathe is secondary to the primary purpose that as long as you have breath, you should praise the Lord. And nobody is excluded. Now, you may exclude yourself because you get anti-God and anti-everything, but God created you and I to praise Him. And the primary reason why we praise God it's because He made us. There are a whole lot of other reasons, but the primary reason is, know ye that the Lord, He is God. It is He who has made us. The reason you're here is because of God. You're not here because you're clever. The reason you breathe is because of God. The reason you drink is because of God. The reason you eat is because of God. God gives you water and food to drink. And the reason you can do that is because you're alive. You are created by God. If God was not involved in your life, you would not be here. So we praise God primarily because He made us. The Bible tells us, praise the Lord from the heavens, the stars, the moon, the heavenly bodies, the angels, because He commanded and they were made. The reason they praise is because He commanded and they were made. You and I were made in the image not of, a, or not of the stars or the trees. We are made in the image of God. God created us. And because of that, primarily, we praise Him. Are you all right? It's of Him and through Him and to Him are all things. And many of us are so self-indulgent. Hallelujah. That we don't want to lift our hands and praise the Lord. We shout at a rugby match, but we are quiet in church. We clap at a rock concert, but we don't clap to the Lord. Clap your hands, holy people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Are you all right? Amen. When, you, when, when you're dying and you don't have breath, 
It's a horrible thing. I know somebody who, who has something wrong with their, their lungs, their nasal passages, and when they breathe, it's like they are breathing through a straw. And to them, it's a, the breath is precious. The Bible says, uh, the deer panteth for water. My soul longs after thee. Why does the deer pants for water? Because he wants to drink. And his nostrils are enlarged. He can smell the water. He wants to drink, but he also wants to bathe to lose the scent of the deer in the water so the lion can get him. So he's panting for water. And when that happens, he likes somebody having an asthmatic attack. Have you ever seen somebody having an asthmatic attack? All they want is oxygen. <gasps> Hello. And what David was saying, the deer panted for water and the shepherd cried. said, whoa, that deer panted for water more than I long for God. The breath that you have in your lungs, the breath in our lungs, we praise him with. Everything that has breath praises the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you okay? Amen. So we praise him because we are made. And if you go through the, 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 the scriptures, it is amazing. It says uh, in Psalm 96, Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. All the earth, but sing to him a new song. What is a new song? Have you ever wondered many times that the song may be old? Sing unto him an old song. Or sing unto him a new song. So that's why we compose songs. That's why we sing songs. On the other hand, you can have an old song that is sung with a new anointing. It is sung like a new song. Even though the song is old, it comes to us afresh. Like the rain that rain, got rain last week and the week before, but the rain comes to us afresh every time it comes. The Bible tells us God comes like rain, like the former and the latter rain. Verse 10, Psalm 96. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns, the world also is firmly established. It shall not be moved. He shall judge the peoples righteously. Let the heavens rejoice. And let the earth be glad. Let the heavens rejoice and the earth be glad. Serve the Lord with gladness. It's a shocking thing when you think that everything is owed to you. What is the word? Entitled. And it happens even in church. We come to church and oh, he, didn't, he didn't shake my hand. He didn't do this. He didn't say hello. They didn't give me a cup of tea. What's wrong with you? At home, who makes your cup of tea? You make it yourself. The fact that somebody makes it for you at church, it's a privilege. And if they miss you, well, they miss you. Go make your own. Give God a break. And give the kitchen staff a break. Serve, serve, not just to be served. Jesus said the Son of Man came to the earth not to be served, but to serve. You serve the Lord with a spirit of gladness. Serve the Lord with gladness. It's a horrible thing when all you do is receive. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Joy comes from serving. Serve somebody. Bake a cake for somebody else. Make a cup of tea for somebody else. Bake a, uh, make, make a pavlova. Insult the, the egg and make a pavlova for somebody else. <laughs> and if you really don't like somebody, give them some uh, rhubarb. <laughs> Just make some rhubarb stew and give it to your enemy. <laughs> I 
<laughs> Hallelujah. You know, the Bible says God will not give you a, a snake if you ask him for a fish. He will not give you a stone when you ask him for an egg. <laughs> Are you okay? Bless the Lord, oh my soul. <laughs> Hallelujah. But we serve God. How do you serve God? By serving others. You know, Jesus said, uh, because I was sick and you came and visited me, I was hungry and you gave me some pancakes. I was naked and you gave me some clothes. And then, when did we see you naked? When did we see you sick? What happened? And as much as you have done it to the least of these, my brethren, so you serve God in that spirit of gratitude and gladness. And when you do that, it's amazing what happens because the, the, the word gladness there is the word joy. It says make a joyful noise and serve the Lord, the Lord with joy. Serve the Lord with gladness. The joy of the Lord is my strength. We shall go out with joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing. And the trees of the hill, the kawais and the makrokapa and the, the myri. Who's seen a myri? Who knows the myri is a tree? <laughs> they clap their hands. If the trees clap their hands, we ought to clap our hands. Why? Because we are here to serve the Lord. Brother, let me be your servant. Let me be as Christ to you. When you're sad, I'm there. When you're hungry, I will give you something to eat. And when you're my enemy, I'll give you rhubarb. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you okay? But there's so much satisfaction. Barry, you are a very anointed man. Do you like rhubarb? Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Are you okay? Who likes rhubarb? Everybody that put up their hand, can you come to the front for prayer? <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, dear me. Rhubarb. Rhubarb, 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 rhubarb. Hallelujah. But serve the Lord with joy. It is amazing when our attitude, when there's an attitude of gratitude. In everything you do, there will be strength to do it. Hallelujah. Joy is a byproduct of the kingdom. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. If we are part of that kingdom, then the citizens of that kingdom ought to be filled with joy. Joy is not happiness. Happiness often is a product of reaction to something that has happened positively in your life. So when you're hungry and you have hot spaghetti, you're happy. But that's not joy. Joy is a product of the kingdom, and we should always have that. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. And, and when even when we are sorrowful, true joy is born out of sorrow. You shall sorrow, but your, sh your sorrow shall be turned into joy. Tears endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning in your presence is fullness of joy in the presence of God hallelujah your right hand are pleasures forevermore we shall go out with joy therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion everlasting joy shall be upon their heads can you imagine if this church have a helmet of joy? 
that every time we come, there is a joy unspeakable and full of glory that governs us, that overshadows us, our time together where we lift our hands and serve the Lord in praise and worship with gladness of heart. They ate their bread, they broke bread from house to house and in the temple giving praise to God with gladness of heart. Let's be that church. Hallelujah. Are you all right? So serve the Lord. Serve others. Bake a cake. Hallelujah. <laughs> and if you don't know how to bake, boil some rhubarb. <laughs> how do you cook rhubarb? You boil it. Why do you boil it? Because it's poisonous? <laughs> Can you eat it raw? Why not? Because it's poisonous. It's poisonous. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Have a look at uh, Malachi. Malachi is uh, the last book of the Old Testament. The Australians call it Malachi. Or is it the Italians? The Italians call it Malachi. The Australians call it Malachi. <laughs> the Samoan word for Malachi is Malachi. And I think that's a proper pronunciation. When you get to heaven, you know. Did I tell you about the three guys that went to heaven? And there was an American and a Maori and, well, there were four, and a European and, and a Samoan. They were driving down the road and they had a car accident. They all ended up in heaven. And the, the reason they had a car accident, they were, they were arguing. The, the, the European said, Jesus is a Pacquiao. He's the God of the white man. Maori said, no, no, Jesus is a Maori. And the <laughs> Samoan said, Jesus is our morning. He turns out, oh, yeah. no. And they all ended up in heaven, and, and here comes Jesus. And, they were saying, and when he came in, he said, <laughs> And he just proved that he was Samoan. <laughs> See, I, I make you joyful. Hey, hallelujah. What's that? Too much almond cake. Almond cake. Too much almond cake. Uh, <laughs> Mrs. Ferguson, if you're watching this live stream, almond cake is very nice. Almond, almond, almond. It's uh, in the Bible. It is. You know, the dead rod of Moses uh, put in the presence of God and almond came out. Uh, the almond tree is the first tree that, that blooms. You know that? What did God say to Jeremiah? What can you see? I see the blooming of an almond tree. So it's in the Bible. Mrs. Ferguson, almond cake is nice. I hope she's watching. Have you got Malachi? Malachi? <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's read from verse 1. The burden of the word of the Lord... To Israel by Malachi, the burden of the word of the Lord. I want to say something about that because uh, many times we don't know the preparation that goes behind the scene when somebody brings the word of the Lord. There is a burden on the word of the Lord and those that bring the word of the Lord, they take their time because there's a burden. You ask Barry, you ask uh, Martin, ask uh, Ben, and every pastor that prepares to come and preach, there is a burden on the word of the Lord that the preparation is right because God provides the seed, the sower, and the soil, 
And the burden of the word of the Lord needs to be prepared because uh, people are coming and they need to be fed. They need to be encouraged. Hallelujah. And sometimes you have to know the spirit of how you release the word of the Lord. I was accosted at the foyer some time back by one of our ladies, and she looked at me and she said, you look shocking, you look terrible. Uh, she said, uh, you look like you need a rest. She did not know that I, I needed to rest. But I could have said to her, the reason why I look terrible is because of the burden of the word of the Lord. You go to sleep, I'm up till about 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, sitting in the presence of God, trying to get a word for you, that you may be fed when you come here, you may be encouraged when you come here, you may be ministered to when you come here. I don't want to turn up here and just mouth off what I want to mouth off. I want to hear from God for the benefit, your benefit, not mine. And when I hear from God, I bring it. And sometimes I bring it wrongly. I bring it in, maybe bring it in the wrong. So I need to understand that we grow, uh, <laughs> we grow in the truth, but the truth that is spoken in, in love. I had a, I've got a young man that I've been mentoring for some years. He's a pastor of a church, very nice, significant church in, in a, one of our bigger cities. And we were zooming, and uh, he said, you got bags in your eyes again. I said, you know why those bags are there? It's because of you. The burden of the word of the Lord. So when Barry gets up here to preach, there's a burden that comes before the presentation of the word of the Lord. And when it came to Malachi, Malachi has to minister this to the people. And he says, there's a burden of the word of the Lord on me. It's not my word, it's God's word, but it comes through me. Are you all right? So when Pastor Favai or Pastor Owen gets up here, there's a burden that goes with it. I just thought that has nothing to do with praise. I'm just uh, sharing something with you. And then in verse 2, it says, I have loved you, says the Lord, yet you say, in what way have you loved us? There's a, there's a, a, a retort, there's a, a question and answer. And they, God is asking the question, and they're answering, and they're asking question as he answers. He said, I've loved you. He said, how? Show me. The very fact that you breathe. <laughs> Hello? Amen. And you can read that in your own time. If you want to go through the book of Malachi, there's only four chapters. But I just wanted to uh, take a moment to show you how ungrateful we can be when things don't seem to go our way. So in verse, in verse 6, God says, A son honors his father. A son honors his dad. And a servant, his master, a servant honors his master. If then I am your father, where is the honor to me? Where is my honor? And if I am a master, where is my reverence, says the Lord of hosts, to you priests who despise my name, yet you say, in what way have we despised your name? He said, I'm your father. When we pray, we pray, our father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. It's the will of the father. We pray to the father. <coughs> Hallelujah. It's the kingdom of the Father. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. It's of Him and through Him and to Him are all things. And He said, if I'm your Father, where is my honor? Where is the honor that you're supposed to honor me with? Glory and honor, praise and power, be unto Him who sits upon the throne and unto the Lamb for Ever and ever worthy is the lamb that was slain. If I'm your father, where is my honor? If I'm your master, where is my reverence? All has to do with the attitude 
of praise and worship. Our attitude. Are you serving God with gladness or are you serving God reluctantly? Hallelujah. Can you show that thing? Okay to be a man. It's not okay. It's necessary. What the hell are we going to do without men? You look around the city here, you see all these buildings go up. These men, they're doing impossible things. They're under the streets, working on the sewers. They're up on the power lines in the storms and the, and the rain. They're keeping this impossible infrastructure functioning. This thing that works in a miraculous manner. They work themselves to death. And often, literally, the gratitude for that is sorely lacking, especially among the people who should be most grateful. You see university professors, especially of the social justice bent, they take everything they have for granted, failing to understand entirely that there's a massive infrastructure of unbelievably hard-working, solidly laboring, working-class men breaking themselves in half on a regular basis making sure that everything that always breaks works okay to be a man it's not i'm showing you that because many times we take for granted the things that we have and yet people could lose their lives providing them for us but when we don't get them at the time that we want we get angry we get frustrated we tell people off we think that they we think that we are owed that we don't know that behind the scene there are many people that are working we need to be grateful for the things that we have and thank people if we ought to thank people then we ought to thank god who give those people the strength to be able to do what they do that's why we serve the lord with gladness and he said, if, I, if I'm your father, where's the honor that is due me? And then he said, you, you offer blind animals and lame animals on my altar. And then he says, offer that to the governor of your state. Offer that to your prime minister. Offer that to the minister of health and see if they will accept it. If they don't accept it, why do you treat me thus when I give you the breath of life? Why do you so dishonor me when every day I give you life? Why are you so ungrateful? That's why we ought to serve the Lord with gladness, with gratitude. The people that serve us, every now and again, say to the person behind the, behind the, the servery, thank you very much. We think we are owed a good coffee. With nice sugar or honey, decaf caramel latte, and canned herrings. We thought we all that somebody has to go fresh for the herring, and somebody has to do it, put it in the can. And when somebody gives it to you, you ought to be grateful. Serve the Lord with gladness. It brings you tremendous satisfaction. When you're serving, if all you do is imbibe, 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 and eat, and eat, and receive, it's more blessed to give than to receive. Serve somebody. Smile a while and give your face a rest. That's a, that's a song. Amen? Did you know that? It's a song. Smile a while and give your face a rest. All right. What's the next one? <laughs> but God is Father to us. And when we come to praise Him, we ought to lift our voices with gratitude. Say, God, thank you I'm still here. Thank you that I'm alive. Thank you that I can see my friends. I can watch the rugby and praise my heroes with them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, everybody has two fathers. We, we share that. God will give you. On the, maybe, you know, God will give you men around you. If you haven't got a father physically, God will give you men around you. There will be a father to you. I know that they are not substitute for your dad, and you may be looking for your dad. But God said this. Be perfect, even as your father in heaven. 
He is the father to the fatherless and defender of widows. He sets the solitary in a family. And if your earthly father has disappointed you, you can always go upstairs to a father who has a plan to do you good and not evil, to give you hope and a future, to a father who has never disgraced himself before you, to a father who loved you from the beginning to the end. For that alone, let us be grateful and praise God for who he is and what he is. Hallelujah. You know what the Bible says in the book of Hebrews? That we ought to offer up a continuous sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of our lips, giving glory to his name, giving thanks to his name. Hallelujah. You go back to Psalm 100 and 100. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. Enter his courts with thanksgiving. Can you imagine that? Thanksgiving just opened up the courts of God. Hallelujah. Into his courts with praise. Be thankful. When we live with that attitude, even the small, God can multiply. Multiply things that uh, we don't have. When Jesus looked up to heaven and thanked God and broke five loaves and two fishes and fed a multitude. And at the end of the miracle, 12 baskets, every, every disciple had a basket full of food, leftovers. Don't forget the leftovers. Sometimes the leftovers are more than what God used to start the miracle with. But don't throw away the leftovers. Gather the leftovers because there are people that can do with the leftovers. You may be blessed coming here. You get a good feed spiritually. But take the leftovers. Fill your grain silage. And go home and somebody is asking for, give them the leftovers. The overflow. Are you all right? But all comes because there's an attitude of thankfulness to praise God. Hallelujah. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endures to how many generations? Oh, for the Lord is good, good. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. You know, uh, one day when, 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 when a young man came to Jesus and said, uh, Good Lord, Rabbi. What do I do to be saved? And Jesus said, are you calling me good? Are you saying I'm God? Because only God is good. Are you saying that I'm G- I, Jesus, God in the flesh? Are you saying I'm God? What was the thing? Because he said good. He said only God is good. If you're calling me good, are you saying I'm God? When everybody else say I'm not, are you saying I'm God? The Lord is good. Get that into your heart. Into your heart of hearts, the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. The mercy of God is everlasting. We shared last week, I don't know if it was this service or the service I spoke or the, or the week before. 
the word mercy is not just the providence of God that He loves everybody. The word mercy is in the context of the Old Testament is a covenantal word. God reveals Himself through two covenants, the old and the new. The word mercy is a covenant word, which means that God, who is a covenant-keeping God, will have mercy on you. And because He's eternal, the mercy is actually eternal. And every time you encounter and appropriate that mercy... Jesus, son of David, have mercy. He said, who's that? That blind guy over there. Tell him to go. The disciple said, shut up. He's busy. He said, no, 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 no. He said something. He said, Jesus, have mercy. What's that? Covenant. Not just a natural providence where you are. Jesus, God has mercy on everything. It's a covenantal word that goes beyond covenant that even though we may not keep the covenant, that mercy still comes our way. But it's a covenantal word and Jesus stopped the shout that stopped God. Why did God stop? Because the man mentioned mercy. What do you want? I want to see the woman with the demon-possessed daughter from Syrophoenicia. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. You know what the disciples said? Same thing, shut up. Tell her to go away. She's trying to imitate a Jew. She's not a Jew. She's a Gentile. Jesus said, I can't give you my children's bread. Not, not the bread. Just the crumbs that are left over. Why did he get his attention? Jesus, son of David, have mercy. And that mercy is demonstrated powerfully by an individual, but more powerful in a crowd. The sure mercies of David. Mercies. It's when we, we do it to each other, we come we honor God, we have mercy on each other, but God has mercy on us. He said His mercy is everlasting. That's why mercy is always linked to truth, because it's covenant. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endures to all general Rations. You can dissect the truth, you can burn the truth, but the truth is still the truth. And Jesus said, the scriptures will not be broken. Why? Because the truth endures. So when you come to church, and even at home, let there be a gratefulness of heart, let it be an attitude of gratitude to God, to people, and to everything. If we can do that, we will be a community that will shine forth the light of Christ and the love of the Savior. Hallelujah.